Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly and let's talk about the dashboard creation process. Now in this short presentation, I'm going to teach you that what it takes to create an awesome dashboard plus a couple of skills that you would require to be able to keep creating dashboards for life. Let's just get started. When you're creating a dashboard, you're trying to solve two kinds of problems. The first problem is what do you want to present in the dashboard, the content part of it. The second problem is how do you want to present that in the dashboard, the visualization and the design part of it. The what part uh, essentially comprises of things like uh, understanding the data, researching about the data, planning what do you want to present, the points of analysis and stuff, and probably making a mock of what do you want to present and how is it going to look like. And then the presentation part of it comprises of actually doing the calculations in Excel, uh, then taking those calculations and visualizing it, and then formatting the entire thing to make it look great. Now these two problems can be grouped into two stages. The first stage is going to be the dashboard planning phase, when you plan the dashboard out. The second stage is going to be the dashboard creation and the dashboard design phase, when you actually make the dashboard look great. I mean, you create charts, you create visualizations. So I've done a lot of trainings at a lot of companies, and one thing that I've figured out in almost every dashboard training that I've done is that people try to intermingle between the two stages. That means they think about the design first and then probably they don't think about the, the content of the dashboard enough. If you think about the design of the dashboard first, what is going to happen is that you'll always struggle with questions like how do I make it look prettier or what more can I do with this dashboard? But then if you think like that, you're, you're omitting one of the essential parts of the dashboard, which is the content of the dashboard. If the content of the dashboard is not up to the mark, your dashboard can look absolutely stunning. It can look great, but it will have little meaning to the business because the business cannot make decisions out of that. It can look great. It's just looking great at the piece of paper. It's just an art. It's just a decoration. It's not a business tool that is going to help someone to make a decision. So do not intermingle between the two stages work on the dashboard planning first and then work on the dashboard creation and design always remember that the design follows the content and not vice versa let's just take a look at the entire dashboard planning and the dashboard creation phase all right when you sit down to make a dashboard the first thing that you're usually given is a data dump some data is thrown at you and you're asked to make a dashboard now, the first thing that I want you to do is not even take a look at that data. Um, let that data be aside for a while. What I want you to do first is ask question about the audience of the dashboard. Ask who is going to be the audience of this dashboard. Now, are they like the management of the company? Are they the clients, the suppliers? When you understand the audience, it's going to let you know that what is inf what information is relevant to the audience. Obviously, you will not share the same information with the clients as you would share it with the management of the company. So the audience is going to help you decide on the relevance of information. The second in important thing the audience is going to help you decide is on the uh, type of visualization. Do you want to keep it succinct or do you want to keep it detailed? Do you want to make charts, visualizations or do you, do you just want to write the text out there? The audience has preferences on the type of information that they would like to read and you would like to cater to that. Remember, you're trying to make the dashboard for the audience, not for yourself. So give them what they need. Once you think about the audience, the second part uh, that you want to think about is the decision that they are trying to make. So the, the audience is definitely asking you to make a dashboard from a data dump because they are trying to see something. They're trying to make a decision or they're trying to take some action out of that decision. Like, you know, it could be a pricing decision. It could be a project status. It could be an annual performance review. If your dashboard is not helping the audience to make that decision, your dashboard is not doing a good job right? So once you take a look at the audience, then you take a look at what decision are they trying to make from that dashboard. And the third thing is, which is important is, what are the points of analysis or what things would they analyze from that data dump that is going to help them to make that decision? So points of analysis as in, what are the important things or the important calculations that they do to see that are the things going bad or the things going good? What calculations, what ratios, what are the important metrics that they calculate? So make a list of that. So once you've taken a look at the audience and you've taken a look at the decision and you've taken a look at the point of analysis, 
then you should go back and take a look at the data dump that is this data enough for carrying out all the calculations ratios and important metrics and if the data is enough good enough i mean you can start you know working with the data and if the data is not enough you know that we need an additional data so uh, audience is step number one i mean you're definitely thrown some data but data is not step number one audience is step number one second step is decision the third step is point of analysis and the fourth step is verifying that can that analysis be made from that data or not now this is good enough this is theory and i don't want you to leave that aside i want you to kind of write that down who is the audience write it down on a piece of paper write it down that what decision are they trying to make and make a list of all the points of analysis that they're trying to analyze from the data in fact what i've done is i made a short dashboard planner which has about three or four questions that you would like to ask the person who's giving you the dashboard assignment and you want to get that filled once you get that fill you'll have a uh, very good clarity about the dashboard. Let's just take a look at the dashboard planner. I'll also give you a link to download that, but let's just take a look at the dashboard planner that I've already filled up. So take a look at this planner. The first question is who's the audience? So I've written senior management, uh, vice president sales, assuming that I'm making a sales dashboard and uh, the senior sales managers are also my audience. The dashboard is going to go to them. Now, once I understand the audience, um, I get to know that what decision are they trying to make? So they're trying to see that how is the sales and product performance of the company doing? Uh, so is the sales happening good? Are, are the products selling good and things like that? So they're trying, trying to see the sales and the product performance. Next, let's just take a look at what other things that do we have? What are the points of analysis uh, that is important to them? So if they have to make a decision about the sales and the product performance of the company, what all things will they analyze? So they will analyze yearly and monthly sales trends, sales and sales contribution by product mix and a whole lot of things like that. With all the points of analysis that you've written down, the next step is to mock the calculations. That means how the calculations are going to look uh, on a piece of paper that you're actually going to do it on the spreadsheet. Now, I don't really want you to do the calculations on a piece of paper. I just want you to create a mock of those calculations. Let's just take a short example. So uh, when we were reading the, uh, the dashboard planner, we read that one of the points that the people want to analyze is that how is the uh, sales trend going yearly and monthly? So you can take a look at that uh, here I have years and here I have months and against those years and months I have the sales that I have made. Now I have not calculated the sales here. This is just a mock of how this is going to look like. That's about it, nothing much. What this helps you to do is it helps you to pick the right type of a chart for your data. Now I can see that this is a time-based data. I have years and I have months and I have the sales against it. So this is a time-based data and it's the data over two years. So I can probably pick up a line chart for it and I can decide on what type of a chart should I pick up for each kind of uh, calculation. Once I decide on uh, the right type of a chart, then I have to create a mock of the dashboard that how the entire dashboard is going to look like. This is how I have created the mock. Now what the mocks helps me to do is uh, it first helps me to arrange all the charts together and see that how the entire picture of the dashboard is going to look like. And second, it also helped me solidify my mental picture on a piece of paper that I have things in mind. OK, this is going to come here. That is going to come here. But that's a lot to think. If you can put it down on a piece of paper, you certainly have a rough visualization ready on a piece of paper. The third thing is it also helps me to take approvals based on that mock that I have made. So you can take that uh, mock dashboard, mock calculations, all the paperwork that you've done, show to the management that you can tell them that this is how it's going to look like. Do you approve of me to go and build it on Excel? Because Excel, building it on Excel takes time and effort. Doing a little rough work on paper does not take that much of time. Even if they disapprove of your dashboard design or the look and feel or the way that you put it together, they can just tell it to you right away and you can save a ton of time uh, reworking that on Excel. Uh, this is the first page of the planner where we wrote everything, the points of analysis, the data adequacy. And, and the second page of the planner is about the dashboard mock. You can take a look. This is the calculations mock, how the calculations are going to look like. And finally, I have the dashboard mock, how the dashboard is going to look like. And this is a good enough planner. So even if you're not the person who's making the dashboard for yourself, you can give this planner to somebody else and he can then work on the dashboard. So you have all the clarity as to what to calculate, how to calculate, what 
calculations and how the final product should look like. And then you can obviously fine tune that. All right, let's do a quick recap of the entire dashboard planning phase. The first part is the audience. You start with the audience. Who is the audience? The second part is the decision that they are trying to make. You write that down. What decision should, should come out of the dashboard? Otherwise, creating a dashboard, spending and all the time and effort is just a waste of time. Number three is the points of analysis. That means to get to that decision, what all things do they analyze? Number four is that you take a look at the dump of the data that is given to you and you see that can those calculations, the metrics and the ratios can be calculated from this data dump or not? Is the data adequate or not? And if not, you ask for more data, you search for more data. This leads to this entire uh, four step leads to two things. First is mocking of calculations. You can take all the points of analysis and you can quickly create a mock of that in on a piece of paper that how the mock of calculations is going to look like. Then you take that mock of calculations and you create a mock of the dashboard that how the entire dashboard is going to look like. And this is converted into a two, three, four page planner. And the planner is going to help you how to move forward with your dashboard. All right, we now move on to the dashboard creation and design part of it. This is where you start to pick up Excel and you start to build the dashboard in Excel. Now, obviously you have done all the paperwork. You exactly have the mock of the calculations. So you start doing the calculations on the spreadsheet and probably you're going to use pivot tables or formulas or do some other technique to do those calculations in the spreadsheet. Once you do those calculations, you have to be clear about the charts that you're going to use and you already have a mock of the dashboard as well. So you start to create the charts and the visualization and start to put them together in the form of a dashboard. Now, there is a very interesting thing that happens in between these two stages, which is the calculation performing stage and taking the calculations and putting it in the dashboard stage. That stage is nothing but the insight stage. Now, let's say, for example, you're trying to build a sales dashboard and you're trying to crunch some sales numbers. And as soon as you crunch the numbers, you maybe form a pivot or you do some formulas and you realize that when you take a look at the numbers, you realize that, oh my God, the sales dipped during our holiday season. And that's a bad thing. You might just want to show that explicitly in your chart. Or let's say you're trying to work on the profits of the company and you realize that the profits tripled during the promotions. And that's a really, really good thing. The promotions worked to triple the profits. You want to bring that out and you want to do that, do more of that. So these are insights that you will often get when you work with data and you crunch the data in actual numbers. You will realize that some things are moving up, some things are moving down, and you want to bring those insights into your dashboards. You want to capture them and you want to highlight them. So let's say, for example, you're trying to work with the sales and the sales is dipping or the sales is rising. That's a good or a bad trend. You want to highlight that especially in the dashboard. That is going to make your chart, your visualization a lot more relevant. Right. The second part of this is the design part of it. Now in design is just like just clearing the clutter, improving the formatting, the look and feel of it. Just a few things like you give attention to the things that deserve attention. You take the attention away from the things that do not de deserve the attention. That's essentially the what part of design. That means what all things are you supposed to do when it comes to formatting and design of the dashboard? And then the second part is how are you supposed to do it? And that's just something that we will actually take a look in terms of case studies in the dashboard course itself. And you finally get that charming dashboard. If you kind of plan, you finally make it and then you format it as well. You get that beautiful looking dashboard, but the process does not end here. What you need to do always with the dashboard is update that dashboard because with time, the business dynamics change, the questions that the dashboard is answering, that also changes. So you need to keep on constantly updating the dashboard so the dashboard stays relevant in terms of solving business problems or taking business decisions. All right, now let's just take a look at the skills that are required to stay on top of the game. So this was our two phased process where we were planning the dashboard and then we were creating the dashboard. So when you're planning the dashboard, one of the most important skills is the knowledge of the business or the process. You cannot understand the data, research the data, plan the dashboard, ask the right kind of metrics if you do not understand the business or the process.
The second and the the second stage, which is the dashboard creation and the design, require more of Excel based skills, the tool based skills. So you need to know some sophisticated Excel techniques to be able to perform those calculations if the calculations are really complex. And you need to be able to take those calculations and convert those calculations in, in form of beautiful charts and visualizations that communicate the value of those calculations very easily or the information very easily. So first thing is the knowledge of the business that is going to help you plan the dashboard properly. And the second thing is the dashboard design and the creation in which you require two essential skills. One is the knowledge of uh, Excel. And then second thing is, are you good at visualizing data or not? Let's just take a look at the skill matrix. So what I have here is uh, right from low level to an expert level and this is the time. And we have three critical skills that we've just discussed, the business or the process knowledge, Excel and visualization skills. And how these skills are going to impact or how these skills are going to be important in your career over a period of time. So let's just start with the first one, which is business and the process knowledge. So if you talk about the business and the process knowledge, which is this one, obviously when you start out working in a company or when you start creating the dashboard, you're not very sure that what are the very important metrics uh, that you want to calculate, that you want to present it in the dashboard. So at the start, your um, skills are low in terms of understanding the industry, understanding the business, understanding the process. With time, you have to improve on that and you have to come up as a good or uh, maybe as an advanced user of the business understanding. And then with time, you have to be you have to get that really up even more than your Excel or your visualization skills because you are using your questions and um, data to drive the businesses. Right. So your business and the process understanding has to be really, really good. The second one is your Excel skills. So. Uh, in the start of your career, you'd expect it to know really good Excel. I mean, you need to be almost an advanced user of Excel if you want to create some great dashboard. So you stay at this level and then you continue to be at this level because you're still continue to make the dashboard. Maybe at this level, you are, you are mid level and you're trying to also create the dashboard plus coach a few of your juniors as well. And then Excel skills are not very important when you kind of move to the very, very senior level. You're not supposed to crunch the data all by your own. You have your employees and your analysts doing the job for you. Let's take a look at the visualization skills in Excel. Now, obviously you need to be good at the visualization skills in Excel. Um, and when you start, you need to know how to create basic charts, format them. But when you become, um, when you go to the middle management and when you start to create full fledged dashboards on your own, then your visualization skills need to be on the top. You need to know how to make sophisticated, good looking, and good communicating visualizations. And finally, visualization skills do not matter with time as you become more and more senior because you know what data to crunch and maybe you just need to be good at it, not very sophisticated at it because your, your people are creating visualizations for you. You do not have to do that yourself. Well, that is pretty much it. That is what it's required to create an awesome dashboard and the skills that you need to have to be able to create awesome dashboards for life. If you have any questions or comments about this presentation, please feel free to put them down in the comments and I'll be more than happy to help you out. Now get started with the course. Cheers and see you soon. Bye-bye.